Hi, I'm Alex Archbull, and I've been buying and selling antiques since I was nine years old. From basements to scrapyards, I'll look just about anywhere I can to find lost antiques and collectibles. And sometimes I'll go big and buy everything. With my wife and kids, we run an antique shop in Edmonton, Alberta, Canada, filled with some of the most unique items we can find. I never know what's going to happen or who I'm going to meet. This is our life, this is our adventure, and this is Curiosity Inc. From home, honey. Hey guys, welcome to today's episode. It's another day here at the shop. Uh, it's my first Thursday of not working at the store in quite some time. I've got Sean to work an extra day because I've got so many errands I have to do in a day. I haven't been able to find as much time for the family as I'd like. So we're trying to scale that back. But while I'm away today, there's lots going on. Um, first up, first up, we have Hans and Zenovia coming at some point today to uh, re-shingle the roof on the old garage here. I've got kind of um, fun plans for it. We are, uh, well, I'll reveal more later on, but I wanna make sure that it's weatherproof for what we're gonna do with it. Um, I was also given a couple doors that we'll probably use in the new build at some point, so we're gonna stash those in the garage. And I see we've got metal detector a sack. ba na 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 <laughs> Hey, he's come back and he's not wearing sandals no. to do some more digging. You came on the muddiest day possible, I think. Yeah, unfortunately. Okay, well, maybe it'll make it so you can uh, pinpoint stuff easier. I hope so, yeah. I heard that uh, water makes it so that the signal's stronger. I haven't heard about that, but I'll give it a try. Yeah, it's worth a try. The inside of my old garage is just being used basically for storage right now. Um, it's sort of just a big open space with some stuff, some uh, construction supplies and various other things in here. But um, I was contacted by Anthony Antoine, who's our indigenous uh, stone carver from uh, the Northwest Territories. He does soapstone carvings, they're amazing, they're beautiful. He had to move recently and he lost his space for carving, so we're gonna let him carve in here. I don't use the space for that much, so we can run an extension cord, give him some light and power in here, and he can carve in here to his heart's content. So this is gonna become a little artist studio <laughs> in the garage. Um, so I thought, well, we better make sure that the roof is solid in here so that uh, it doesn't get any rain or water or moisture in here. Uh, at some point, I've gotta come and do some cleaning of this space because um, he's gonna need a little bit of room to work. But uh, for now, uh, I'm just getting it unlocked and ready so Hans and Zenobia have somewhere to stash some supplies. It looks like the neighborhood kids are kind of curious what's going on over here. I would be too. I think at some point Zach's gonna go through the spoils pile here today where all the, the dirt we scraped back was. It's a daunting task, but you know, it's worth it if you find something really cool. We found some cool stuff the other day. While Zach digs and Sean works the store and Hans and Zenobia are coming in to work on the roof, I'm actually out on a pick right now. I'm meeting folks at uh, an older house and apparently the garage is just packed full of antiques and collectibles. Um, hopefully I'll have a chance to film and do an episode of it, but we'll see. So we are starting on the inside of the house and I can see you've got all these lovely little boxes um, all set aside. That's kind of cool. Tiger timer for Ford cars. So if there's things that are of interest, um, you said it's okay if I set them aside and, okay. And you've got some early, boy, this looks like it was dug out of the ground. Um, That's an early pot. Yeah, yeah, unfortunately, uh, the foot is here. Oh, it's become it, a little fractured. It did, and I don't know, um, well, I don't know how it is. Well, cast iron skillets are still really good for cooking on. Oh, oh there you go. You know, people still buy them. Mm -hmm. We've got some books. Was, uh, was your mom a nurse? Yes, she was. Surgical nursing? Yeah. State board questions and answers? Oh, she had a mixed mom. She loved the science, and that's where hope got her. Diseases of the organs and respiration. You know, old medical books are fairly popular. That's from 1909. That's really quite an early one. And what people look for, as gruesome as it is, they look for the diagrams. They look for the pictures. Oh. That's what people are generally after. And you, if you have the early sort of... Um, medical books that have really wonderful plates in them. This has actual photographs, poor guy. Um, so they they give you an idea of what's going on. But yeah, medical books are always of interest, so we'll set that aside. Um, you got a big old Underwood typewriter. Those are always popular. And you even have extra ribbon too. And uh, sometimes it's almost just as hard to find the ribbon as it is to find the typewriter itself. 
Um, you've got some tongs, you've got a splicer. So somebody must have been doing some uh, Super 8 editing or some film editing. Mm -hmm. um, old soldering iron. I was gonna say, at first it looked like a really early curling iron. I was like, no, you wouldn't want to stick that on your head. That would be That'd a little be brutal. <laughs> and you have a whole collection of irons. And these are called sad irons. And you can see right there, it says sad iron right on it. Some of them are asbestos. Um, this, the flat iron building in New York is named that way because it's shaped just like this. It's a pie shaped lot and it looks like a flat iron. So they call any building that sits on a corner lot like that, a flat iron building. Um, and you've got a nice little variety of vintage irons in there. And sadly not, you know, the, the big ones like this are a little bit more unusual. Most irons are just kind of little decoration pieces. People don't really use them too much. Mm -hmm. But I did notice you had a little acetylene lamp in here. And a, it looks like a pocket knife, a little fishing knife. And an interesting little box. So I'm going to bring the acetylene lamp out. Mm -hmm. This one in particular, it's missing its front lens, which is kind of a shame. Mm -hmm. This would have been off a bicycle. Um, early motorcycles had them as well. It would have clipped on just like this. And it ha would have had a big reflector and a lens, and uh, it would have shot a little flame out of it. You could buy these in the old Sears catalogs or Eaton catalogs from the 1920s or so. But if you have an antique bicycle and you want to complete your look, a lot of times they're missing that lamp. So, yeah. So there's a couple things already. It would have been um, more elaborate than, than that. That's part of the, the Tiger Timer, I think. But it would have been like a, a glass lens. Still cool, though. Oh, at first glance, I thought this was a sifter of some, time, uh, some kind, but I was way wrong. This little box here is actually meant for rolling your own film. Uh, and if we look at the bottom here, we can see it says uh, Eastman Kodak right on the bottom. So this is an early, early piece, patented 1907. So if you were uh, a photographer and you wanted to uh, put your own film onto your reel so you could use it in your folding box or box cameras, this is the sort of thing that you'd have to have. So it's pretty cool that you've got that still in its original box. And I ended up with a whole bunch of uh, cameras not that long ago. You can see it used to say I probably Kodak right on the box there. And it no longer says it. So it's a neat piece. And you've got some, some copper pots. And boy, just all kinds of stuff. But you said the, the fun stuff, the, the, the big collection's out in the garage. And so we're going to have a chance to go out there. Okay. This, here? this is the magical garage, and you've got a beautiful, looks like a Gendron style pram. A good old football. I mean, that's just yeah, that's a cool piece. You don't see many original sleighs sitting around. Mm -hmm. Did you buy it at an auction sale? or? Uh, well, the wife originally bought it at an antique store in Ontario when we were out there, and uh, I'd always meant to get it uh, refurbished, but uh, suffice to say, we never quite got to it. So. Oh, okay. And I see, now I had to notice this, you moved a Ford Prefect out of the way. Now, is this your car? It is indeed. Well, it's mine and my wife's, actually. Okay. It looks just beautiful. Did you do the restoration on it yourself? Oh, or? heavens no. Uh, it was uh, done here by a local shop, actually, uh, Miles Imports. And oh, Miles did Yeah, Ken did it. Okay. Yeah, Ken did it. And uh, it took four years for them to basically redo it, so... The entire time that we were actually in Winnipeg, they, uh, they managed to get it all done. It took them four years. Four years, basically right from uh, top to bottom is what they did, or bottom to top, depending on which way they were doing it. So. Do you uh, drive it fairly often? or? Uh, well, every now and then. I promised the relatives actually to drive in it, so that's one of the things. Okay. But if I might, see yeah. that you're kind enough to ask. Uh, oh, I like how that opens. So the hood, the hood ornament twists to Absolutely. open it. Uh, we actually put some aquaplane equipment in it, which isn't normal to the uh, to the actual uh, to the actual build. So, uh, what does the aquaplane uh, does it give you better for performance? Or? Yeah, the, uh, there's a there's a like I say, it was a bunch of things because originally this thing didn't come with uh, anything in the way of a, a water cooler or anything along those lines. So, uh, aquaplane back in the day made this stuff so that uh, folks uh, who were stuck with these vehicles uh, in the early 50s and wanted to get a little bit more use out of them in the UK because they built motorways by that point, uh, that they wanted to give them a little more oomph. So Aquaplane was originally a company that made uh, equipment for uh, for folks who would put this engine into boats or uh, another sort of speed equipment. Okay. And uh, yeah, so we found some of that in the UK and had it uh, 
put in. Which so does is, it go from 50 horsepower to 55 horsepower? Well, I think it started <laughs> off with 10 horsepower, and it's probably up to maybe 30 or 40. <laughs> there so, you go. Uh, okay, well, that's a big it's improvement. A now, so. What a cute little car, though. Well, it's very kind of you to say so. And uh, I'm enamored by the quantity of stuff you've got in here. Well, look at all the extra, but you've got almost enough parts to build yourself another uh, prefect. Well, we, uh, we did go a little crazy trying to find parts for it just because it was a little difficult to find parts for it. But a lot of those uh, came from uh, car shows and other uh, bits and pieces that we found along the way. But so. just in case you needed them down the road? Or? Well, we weren't entirely certain what was uh, salvageable on the original car and what wasn't, so we bought some extra bits just in case. So it looks like you have a whole front clip there, basically. Yeah, whole front uh, grill and uh, doors, uh, hood, uh, back uh, back part as well. So so if somebody's watching and they need some prefect parts, we can... I would be happy to, uh, to uh, <laughs> you know, more than happy to get rid of some of them because, quite frankly, if anything happens to this car, chances are we'll just go on to something else. Oh, there you so. go. Okay. Um, and so the items in the garage, have you figured out what you want to sell or not? Or? Well, that's mostly uh, based on uh, what my wife is looking at. But honestly, if there's anything here that catches your eye, do let me know. <laughs> okay. And I will uh, keep, uh, confirm with the boss as to what the, uh, what the story is. Okay. Well, let's, uh, let's poke around and have a look. Absolutely. Uh, this is uh, an electric organ. Okay. And um, this here was a um, tabernacle from the Church of the Clothes. Oh, yes. That's neat. Yeah. Um, you know, I had an organ like that, but I had to give it away. Oh no! Yeah, I'd signed my organ donor card, so. Oh, you know. I put a <laughs> <laughs> She also has records as well. Oh, okay, um, the records are in the case. Yes. Okay, well, let's have a look at the records and see. Is that, that, now, the, were these uh, hers when she was a kid, or younger, or? Uh, uh, some of them, yes, definitely. Other okay. Ones just like oh, I see. Old. There we go. I got it. Now, let's see. Mine is like Lauren Green, so some country, some waltzes. I'm I'm looking to see when there was the. Uh, usually, there's one like Led Zeppelin or something. It's like <laughs> had had to sneak that one past. Like, oh, mom doesn't mind if you're buying Tennessee Ernie Ford, or and then uh, you start getting the rock and roll, and it's like, oh, what what's this one? Johnny Cash today. Yeah, there's a there's a big demand for records still. A lo yeah, a lot of a lot of you know even younger people are are buying them and but they're very fussy with the sort of uh, the music. with the music mm -hmm. yeah but uh, no it's a nice you can tell that collection's been in there for a little while it's a nice mm -hmm. case it has the the feel of like an old Barbie doll case almost like it does add, maybe it's the color uh, I think it's that vinyl that they put on all these sort of cases back in those days that it just has that that feeling like the Barbie camper van I think was vinyl like that. Oh, and I noticed that you have a box full of foot traps. You can't use these now, obviously they're, you know, but the, the larger ones are fairly collectible. Um, yeah, if you have one that's like a, a bear trap. Oh gosh, no, I don't think No, not, I can see there's not one here, but the bear trap is huge. Those, those can be worth, you know, six, $700 or more. Um, as it sits, these at auction, you get maybe 20 bucks a piece or so out of them. They're, they're not overly valuable. But there are people who collect them and then they look for certain brand names just like anything else. Uh, I see you've got a hooch bottle back here. Yeah. It look, it's empty though. The yeah. the party started and ended probably 50 years ago. Probably. Well, yeah, I mean, you, you drink some of that stuff, you'd probably be seeing sideways for a while. Uh, you've got some washboards. Those are always handy to have and lots of gardening pots which i don't discount you know when you see somebody who's got a collection of pottery like this and they've been using it for gardening that doesn't mean it was always intended for gardening um most of the pots that i found at mary borkstrom's house were pots that she was using for for putting plants in and people just thought that's oh, an old flower pot and it ended up being you know this incredibly rare and valuable artwork so uh you never know when a pot like that one might actually be kind of a special piece so it might be worth checking the maker's marks on the bottom. And if I turn the camera on an angle, we can see that that is a settee, or settee. But you said that that is a kind of an interesting one because it folds out into a bed. Mm -hmm. So it's like the original Haida bed, you know, probably turn of the century, 1900s with the little rollers on the feet there. The leather has seen some wear. You can see the spots where it's lumpy. That's where the springs and the fabric probably all need to be redone. Um, but this, when it folds, becomes a leg. 
So it flips all the way forward and then you have yourself, if you're five feet tall, you'd be able to have a, a good night's sleep on that. Otherwise, my feet would be sticking off by about a foot and a half off of that thing. So I, I don't think I'd be visiting grandma's house too much if that's what she made me sleep on. But it's an interesting piece. Um, and if you redid it, it would probably look really amazing. But the cost of redoing it would be astronomical compared to what the thing is worth at the end. But it's definitely worth saving. You know, it's an interesting item. And speaking of liquor bottles, look, somebody got trunk. <laughs> is there anything inside of it? Yes, I don't know what all it Can is. Can I open it? Uh, I Ooh. Oh, it's there's stuff. <laughs> Picture of a little girl. I'm going to rest that gently there. So you got some light, uh, kind of an ornate light fixture, probably from the 40s or 50s. Some Robinson and Company hotel supplies. Well, that's kind of neat. Because that, that would have been obviously from, do you imagine like a hotel was using that, but they were, that must, they must have got a good deal from Robinson. They said, if you buy our, our trays with our stamp on it, we'll give you a better deal. So that's a serving tray. Um, that's kind of cool. I'm going to set that there because I think that's neat. And everything is wrapped up. So who packed all this away? Oh, probably because it's the light fixtures from the remodeling. Okay. And so I'm sure it's light fixtures. It hasn't gone through that yet. So okay, I'm so we'll... Block away from it myself. Okay, yeah, I'll wait until she comes out and she yeah. can have a look at it. You know, I joked about the organ, but this is potentially a Wurlitzer. Now, certain Wurlitzer organs are quite collectible. If you've ever listened to a 1960s you know, I'd say 1967 to 71, Wurlitzer organs played a really big role in a lot of early rock and roll songs. So musicians are looking for good early instruments that work. And even this, which is the original Wurlitzer speaker, if in functioning condition, can be hooked up to play with a guitar amp and it gives you a really cool sort of sound. They can replicate it now on guitar amps by just pushing a button, you get the sound, but nothing is quite like having the original. But I'm going to flip the top on this and see what type of uh, Wurlitzer we have here. Well, what we do have is an old organ, and we do have an early, early speaker, but it's not Wurlitzer, it's a Minshall. Uh, and I, you know, truth be told, I don't know a whole lot about them, but uh, they give a really, uh, there's a very specific sound you get out of an old organ like this um, that you just can't replicate. They're a hit and miss, you know, the right type of Wurlitzer. Um, I can't remember if it's a B3 or four, I, I can't think of it off the top of my head, which is a good one but they can be very valuable. But most organs like this, sadly, aren't too collectible at all. The speaker, on the other hand, well, that's kind of a neat piece. And there might be somebody out there who wants to have an early organ speaker to hook up to something else. But I imagine you probably want to keep them together. And I think I was wrong. I was thinking Hammond B3 or B4 organ. Probably a decent organ for somebody who wants one, but uh, probably a little bit too big for our space. I do see you've got some hardware and some wheels and drawer pulls and all sorts of stuff. So we'll do a little bit of digging and we'll see if we can't put a pile together. I noticed behind the furniture here on the wall, you have a partial bison skull. And it says that it came from a farm in 1886. So they must have found it and thought, well, that's pretty neat. And they kept it all those years ago. So that could be a very old piece. Have you had it down? Is it, uh, does it feel like it's becoming, you know, not fossilized, but is it very heavy? Well, like I say, uh, it was put up on the wall uh, just basically before we uh, we got here. Before okay. Before we actually came back here. And uh, the fact that it's still on that nail after all these years, probably it's heavy, but uh, I don't know if it's quite fossilized just yet. So. Yeah, no, it looks, I've had one like that before I actually found at uh, Mary's house, and it was very, very similar. Okay, well, that happened. Um, very nice couple, and uh, you know, there's only like two blocks from my shop, so this ended up working out really well. Um, ended up with the old rocking horse, um, ended up with uh, what looks like a very early, almost like a fur trade axe head, and uh, a few other collectibles, so it was a pretty uh, pretty fun trip. Now I gotta go check and see if Hans and Zenobia showed up at the shop. No sign of Hans yet. I'm looking up on the roof because that's usually where I find him when I come back to the store. But Zach, you found something. What did you find? I found a 1910 large scent. Oh, it's actually pretty good shape. Too. Yeah. The back's a little crusty, but the front looks really nice. Yeah. Okay. Well, <laughs> you know, at least we're getting back there in time. Yeah. That's, I think, now officially the second oldest coin we found. Because uh, what was before? Or was it a 1910 dime that you found? I think it was 1917 the dime was. So this is the oldest Canadian coin that we found. Of course, yours you found yesterday were older. But... Yeah, 1850s. <laughs> Mine, I think, was just somebody's 
probably a pocket watch fob decoration or something like that yeah. but still cool well you're this area back here is roughly where that house would have been okay um so this might be kind of a hot spot hopefully yeah oh look who it is it's hans i was just looking for you buddy <laughs> So how many bundles do you say it's going to take to do the roof? 13 for the garage. Okay. And then that'll be all re-shingled. Okay. We'll have the shingles taken away. Oh, yeah, yeah. For uh, what I normally charge is 45 a bundle for uh, shingling. But friends and family have, uh, well, family has a different rate. And oh, well. We always help them out anyway. You don't have to treat me special. Well, you're family, Alex. Well, at least it's a nice day. There's plenty of sunshine, including well, your no, dog we who's... we it today, but we're the, at least we know what we need for it now. You brought your dog whose name is Sunshine with you. So, uh, and you're okay picking up that door frame off the guy? No, we already got it here. Oh, okay. It's already in the garage. It's already in the garage? Yeah. Oh, I didn't even look. Well, yeah, we put it in the garage. Okay, I gotta check it out. So this is what we picked up. One of the neighbors down the way said he had his original craftsman style door uh, and the uh, side light windows and the frame and uh, it was just 50 bucks for the whole works and that's a nice antique door. I don't know where I'm going to use it just yet. You know, I might use that as the front door on the new store because it's got the right kind of look, but we'll figure it out. At least we have the frame here to deal with. I really appreciate you picking that up for me, hey, Hans. Not a problem. And we tore it all apart. I put the uh, hinge bolts back in here so that they're easy to find and they yep. don't get lost. Uh, so that just made sense to me just to have it all together. Well, okay. perfect, yeah. I mean, a little bit of TLC and some work and we could probably put that back to use again. Well, yeah, that'd be easy enough to get done. So anyway, uh, I guess pretty soon we'll have to look at the blueprints, Alex. Uh, yeah, well, yeah, once that foundation's in, then we can really start thinking about what we can do with this place. Um, so now yeah, our, our friends, Josh and Dakota, are going to help us. Oh, right? yeah. Yeah. Perfect. I'm looking forward to it. Oh, yeah. They want to work with you, too. Josh was just here yesterday. He said, I sure hope Hans is going to help out on the project. And I said, yep. Yeah, he is. Yeah. No, I'm looking forward to that. <laughs> Wait, we just got summoned by Zach. He's metal detecting out here. What'd you find? So if you look inside of this little piece of dirt there. Oh, I can see a coin edge. edge. Yeah. So if we open it up. Oh, it's an oldie. Oh, that's Let's see. It looks probably five cents. Oh, yeah. Ten. Yeah. That's silver. 1920. Very pretty. And it looks to be in good shape, too. Yeah, definitely. Awesome. Okay, well, if you find a gold one, I'm going to dibs it. <laughs> okay. Good to know. <laughs> but, uh, you know, the silver ones you're welcome to keep as a memento. Oh, thank you. So, so we're finding some more coins. Yeah. Okay. Weird, this wasn't giving me a very good signal, but I dug it anyways, and I'm, I'm glad I did. <laughs> well, and did you go through the big dirt pile yet? Um, I've been through a couple of times now. I haven't found too much, unfortunately. Yeah, but you're finding these coins kind of in the same area? Yeah, it's just, um, well, I found the large cent over there. I found the dime just over here, so okay. I haven't searched this area too much, so I'm going to give it another check and see if there's more. <laughs> well, you're, you're finding stuff. That's yeah. good. Okay, cool. <laughs> Wait, I see Zenobia has joined the club. And Hans, you're saying it's your one year anniversary of when you met. Yeah. Underneath the old apple tree right that here. That's right. And you, you knew that the apple, uh, it was a good apple that fell from that tree. <laughs> <laughs> so a year, well, congratulations, guys. Hey, that's just a meeting. You know, that's the day you told me to cut my trees for me. <laughs> Meanwhile, Zach is digging for treasure in the yard. Uh, hey, you know, it's a regular day. Everybody. What'd you find? Pull tab. Oh, pull tab. Well, yeah. that's not very exciting. No. Just another day at the shop, somebody digging for treasure, Hans Zenovia helping me fix stuff, move things around, store getting built, me looking for treasures. Ah, it's kind of fun. This sure beats my day job that I had before this. <laughs> uh, not much fun when you have to actually work every day and not get out and meet people. Or that's have... true. If we keep getting rain like this, I'm going to have a nice outdoor swimming pool here before long hey, too. That would be just like Antwistle. There you go. Be like, <laughs> Yeah, except you're not living in my garage here. so. <laughs> so what are you guys doing for the rest of the day? Well, we got some doors to pick up for a greenhouse at Sonovia's we're going to yep. build. That'll be good for next year, uh, which we'll be going to her daughter's place. And I think, how many doors are over there? Uh, I think probably eight. Yeah, there's a few. And so doors, they're um, the double doors. Oh yeah. Use well, that's a good idea. And you found the most adorable guy to help you move him. <laughs> uh, well, thanks for helping me out today. When do you guys think you'll be back to help me out with the roof? Uh, hopefully. Gotta oh. see what uh, 
our, I guess technically that's kind of almost like your father-in-law. Uh -huh. Charlie uh, wants to get started on that route for your mother-in-law. Well, her place is priority for sure. Whatever you got time is good with me. Whenever you got it's time. Probably two days on that route, I'm thinking. Maybe three. Uh, so we'll look forward to seeing Hans and Zenobia back to work on the garage. As for me, I have to put all these little treasures inside the shop and get them priced. I hope you guys enjoyed watching today's episode. There's always lots of treasures and lots of cool finds. Stay tuned for more and don't forget to subscribe. Bye for now.